Papnia of House Eridanus uh, asks, who decides taxation? House Eridanus or the emperor? When Eridanus doesn't like you, do they make new taxation laws or do they just figure out new ways to apply to old laws? Um, the key tools of House Eridanus to fuck with people are loopholes. Loopholes. Unclear language. Um imperial taxation that has not been enforced in a certain way noticing things that you happen to have gotten away with for years they are insidious they are powerful and they get to write how the tax laws work but the council of houses will probably be like yo you just invented that rule to fuck with us but they can also give tax breaks to other people so they can be like you know what i think we need to have a psychic tax every family who has someone born with mes they need to pay the government, I don't know, 100 credits a month. You know, to keep the House Serpent's academies open. It's a psychic tax. House Serpent's, you get, I don't know, 60 of those 100 credits. The other 40, well, Eridanus has to operate, don't they? No, non-citizens don't pay taxes. Taxes are just for nobles. You squeeze the, the non-citizens for, for taxes. You, you squeeze those guys to get money out of them. Um, the emperor can step in and be like, Eridanus, behave yourself. But there's no emperor, so fuck it. <laughs> to do what you want. Make up all the tax law you want. People are going to be pissy about it, but that's how it goes. Oh, yeah. All of the, all of the nobles definitely 100% have to pay taxes. Taxation is huge. You tithe to the church, right? The church takes some of your money. That's a tithe. Uh, Eridanus uh, gets some of your money. They also make sure that, like, you get money when you need it. They will they will bail you out. Hong Lu, the planet, because someone asks, they owe, they owe the empire some Cygnus back taxes. Um, the Deathless don't technically owe tax, but they get... Um, they probably get, like, trade sanctions against them. Like, there's some sort of mercenary tax. Uh, that they would pay not to piss off Eridanus, etc. Acre pays taxes to the Empire to use their planets, etc., etc. That kind of thing. Uh, Captain Vagrant Aulus Issa of House Vagrant, thank you for the appropriate quotation marks, um, asks, why do you think the Empire evolved mechs in the first place? Did someone in Fornax or Reticulum just think it would be cool? Or was there some war that required them? I think if you asked Reticulum and Triangulus or Triangulum, why did you build giant bipedal robots with rocket launchers for hands? They would give you like numbers. They would be like, look, we ran the tests. They're combat effective. But in private, they'd be like, God damn, our giant robots are fucking cool. Because why the fuck not? But there would be reasons. They'd be like, yo, Check out this report about the combat effectiveness of this awesome shit. But like also, like you gotta you gotta imagine the first time that House Fornex was asked to build one of these things, it would just be like, look at the plans, look at this very eager, wide-eyed triangulum slash reticulum dork party, and be like, really? Really? You want me to fucking build this? Alright, dorks. Uh, but yeah, they, and they, they've just, they've just spread out into the universe. They're not that rare. We use robot like power suits for all kinds of shit. Uh, let's see. Uh, since the time of the split between Vela, this is a question from Seeker Pixis Canis Major. Uh, since the time of the split between Vela and Pixis, does House Vela have their own exploratory fleet? Uh, no, they're done. The maps are done. They have updates. They maintain the trade routes, but they're they're not they're not explorers. They're road builders, right? They maintain the roads. They keep the lighthouse burning. They don't explore anymore. They're done. Acheron Row has been explored. What you're doing, House Picks, is out there committing suicide. Is is insane. That's ridiculous. Why would you do that? We we did we did our work. Yeah, expand for expand and adjust for stellar drift. They, they they know how to keep people safe on the road. That's their job. Why would we send people into danger? So yeah, I mean Pixis, you have your own you have your own stuff and like you go out looking for planets, but ninety nine point nine percent of the time that Pixis is like, let's just take a jump into space, they never come back. 
it's dangerous being in house pixis you're the you're the fucking scouts from traveler uh let's see here uh charles chester of the upc this is a great question um so charles chester of the upc says how much from earth survived for example, could we pull out an example of democracy working on old earth, like 18th century liberals pointing to the classical world? So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I did for, for every post-apocalyptic game. And I'm going to lean on what I believe to be my favorite thing about post-apocalyptic games. Everyone knows about the, everyone knows what earth is. Earth is where we all came from. Uh, what earth was actually like? Fuck if I know bedtime stories for children. Uh, some people have a better understanding of Earth than others, depending on what planet they're from and, and what faction they're a part of. So, yes, you could be like, there were civilizations on Earth like this. But here's the trick it's all out of context. This is how we get things like naming ships after celebrities and not having context for them. We do not remember, like, you name your kid RuPaul, but you don't know why RuPaul is a person's name. The only people, I, I, I have to tell you, the only people in this sector who know, <laughs> the only people in the sector who know anything about Earth live in a giant, perfect silver sphere. And if you try to go there, they will probably do weird sex things to you and then turn you into an ashtray. So we don't ask. Um, yeah, the USS John Cena. Exactly. Like, like it's it's it allows us to have weird, absurd things where we just don't remember or understand the context for them. But different factions have better understanding of uh, of of the uh, of the Earth. Yeah. <laughs> do we think Beethoven was a pianist or a dog? Or an oven that you cook beets in. And the jingle was, bum, 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 bum. Is that a Beethoven song? Maybe it's not. I don't know. Moonlight Sonata. Is that a Beethoven song? I don't know about classical music. I'm from space. All right. So yeah, that's that's how that works. Um, so the answer is yes and no. Most people, everyone knows what Earth is. And nobody else, like, nobody knows anything about it. All kinds of like different, all kinds of different like <laughs> thoughts and beliefs. Yeah, right. It's just a thing. Uh, okay, Isis Dahlia uh, of House Lyra uh, asks, do slash can faction homeworld planets have governments separate from their factions? Are we assuming the factions pretty much take over their homeworld? Uh, every noble house will have planetary government for the planet they are from other factions may or may not be the government depending there you go uh they could they could become government of another planet they could lose governship of their planet but basically the empire part of imperial law is you get your own planet every noble house has a planet so actually if a minor house, and this is why Pixis is so fucked up, because they were like, we built a planet, kind of. Does this count, please? And the Empire was like, fine, whatever, go, get out of here. Um, but that's that's one thing. Like, if you want to become, if you want to become your own house, you can point. It, it helps your case to point at a planet and be like, yo, look at our planet. We own that shit. Uh, Herpenderp of House Crux, just a strong Crux name, uh, asks, have there ever been other houses? How Cygnus has fallen? Is this a common thing? It's not fallen, uh, or it's not common, but yeah, totally. There have been other major and minor houses that have risen and fallen. We lost a bunch of houses during the scream. I talked about this in the last part. Um, House Pixis might come across a planet that is part of the sector that we did not realize that has its own fully formed TL5 single planet empire. And they're a former house that we have not seen for like forever, hundreds and hundreds of years. What tech level is Lodestone? Four. It's four. I would have told you if it was five. Uh, Francisco Javier Ortez Madera uh, of the Trillion Ring asks, are there different generations of synth? 
I imagine Cygnus didn't nail it on the first try. Are there multiple generations that existed and updated as versions came out? Or were they destroyed or updated? If so, are some generations of synth more dangerous than others? Fuck yes. Come on, I love Blade Runner. Totally. Like, there are probably still some, like, synth generation one around, like, model one synths that are like, hello, I am a human. Boop, beep, boop. With, like, big seam lines and, like... They became, basically what happened was that Cygnus was like, let's make a robot. Okay, let's make a robot like a human. Let's make a robot like a better human. Okay, cool. We can make robots that are exactly like humans. Now let's make them better than us. Now let's make them super better than us. So, whoop, lots of those, yeah. And there's still, there's still lots of them in order. They probably like recalled them, but a lot of places, like you'll go to a farm on a backwater planet and there are synths that barely qualify, right? Synths that are like, like a naked, grubby, pink, sexless humanoid form digging in a field, wearing some overalls so we can't see his bulge spot. Uh, and 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 technically they're illegal, but like you wouldn't go there and murder them. And it's like a like a farm hand, right? Like they're they were all meant to be like humans, but. They, they got better and better over time. And then they got too good. And then we had to kill them all. I mean, they wouldn't have given him a functional dongle, right? He would have just, you know, in case he wanted to put pants on him, he'd have a, you know, synth, synth lump. I, whatever, listen, it's... It, making humanoids is complicated, okay? Uh, so yeah, I hope that answers your question, uh, Javier Ortiz Madera. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, hearts asked a question that we already talked about. Same thing with the synths being developed. That's a question we already got. Um, which faction or house made contact first with the Trillient Ring? Uh, I mean, the Trillient Ring was built out of, uh, a bunch of different people, like nobles that gave up, acre scientists that joined. They were a bunch of people who were like, no, we need to make some like really fucking expensive cool things let's quit being nobles and become this other thing instead and make baller amounts of gold hot ducats for days um rise and size of house bella says how canon is the last houses of illix aka space Yu-Gi-Oh for nobles it's fucking i don't I, I i know this exists i know you nerds made up a game that nobles play with each other I love it. I don't know anything about it. It's totally canon. The Last Houses of Illix is a thing. I will include it in the game as like a background thing. And if any of the players want to like learn how to play it and be good at it, I will happily... That's the thing. It's in. In the game. Done. Just like Cyball. I love it. That's, that's the kind of shit I love. If you want to hook me, if you want me to include the cool shit from, from your creations, make up stuff that fills in little interesting gaps about what the like what is what is the like day-to-day moment-to-moment universe like invent for me tv commercials right make little interesting things and i'm gonna just like oh yeah give me that shit i'm gonna dive on them and i'm going to suck the blood out of them because i'm thirsty for that kind of stuff so do that do that shit uh fennec uh who has not yet chosen a faction uh says how did the guild escape the scream i don't know they're better than us <laughs> um let's see what else we got here um priest junior serpents spyro mccrestus of the uh empire uh emperor's messiah says what was the high church's trajectory through the scream and what's their current relationship with mes we talked about this a little bit earlier um you know it's like it's not a sin there were probably times where we were like I mean, the high church wasn't really formed until the empire was formed, and we've had MES for a long time. So, yeah, I think they're okay. I think they're just like, you know, it's it's a it's a burden some of us are chosen to bear. And thank thank the Lord for House Serpents for making this easy for us. Pray. Pray for mental stability, right? It's a thing. Um Placeholder branch director for averting crises and recovering from emergencies, not a name, just a title, from Acre, says, Hey, Mr. Loremaster. Technically, my job title is Spacemaster, okay? 
but I'll take Lore Master. That works too. I'm a Lore Master in addition. I was curious about the state of education. Is it the same across all systems, tech levels, governments? It interests me a lot if you're born into a class in this universe, since noble houses are still a thing, but technological advancement should ease the access to knowledge. Can a simple man on a farming moon work day and night to study a degree? We at Acre will always promise that no matter your answer, I personally hope it'll be a profitable one. <laughs> you nerd. I love it. Um, education is controlled by the noble houses. Uh, it is a civil right in some places. It's not a civil right in others. Um, every noble gets to decide on their own planet. And if they don't own the planet, then who fucking cares? They're not part of the empire. Uh, Acre probably gives people a combination of like, <laughs> probably give them a combination of like indoctrination and product knowledge. I'm thinking about that like, if Jimmy has three delicious Pepsis and Jane gives him two refreshing Pepsis, how many Pepsis does Jimmy have? Uh, Pepsi? Partial credit, right? Like, indoctrination of children through education is 100% a thing. Ask Prism about that. Ask Prism about those things. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Scryer Serpents the Grin, uh, of House Serpents, uh, of course, um, uh, says... Uh, how was the emperor assassinated? We don't know. Uh, the, the emperor died and there are lots and lots of apocryphal stories, but we don't know a hundred percent for sure. Do we have a corpse? I mean, I think somebody does. We don't know who has the corpse though. Maybe we should work that out. Maybe we should figure it out. <laughs> uh, Montgomery Sethis of House Lyra asks, what's an average lifespan in the sector? Uh, some people have said hundreds of years. Some have said decades. It'd be helpful to know the average age of a noble person and how Trill's rejuvenation drugs affect that. I don't know. How rich are you? Right? Like a, uh, a rich... Ah, that's right. How... Thank you. Yes. So uh, the high church... Uh, and this, this maybe it's not public, public knowledge, but I would say the main, the main story and something I have established before is that, yeah, the Imperial corpse is in the hands of Lyra. That would be the appropriate thing to do. Yes. Thank you. So the church has the corpse, but gave it to Lyra because we haven't had an Imperial funeral yet. Thank you. Thank you, chat. Thank you for reminding me. That's yes. That's how it goes. Um, okay. Average lifespan depends. Regular people. I don't, I don't know who cares. Like they, li they live until they have a farming accident. Um, Nobles live, I would say, between like 80 and 200 years, depending on how rich they are and how willing they are to pay for these things. Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. Eventually, we'd like to be able to provide rich people with uh, an infinite amount of lifespan. Um, Mr. Candles of Triangulum asks, what are the technological differences between Trilliant and Triangulum? Trilliant makes things that people buy. Triangulum makes things that people use, hopefully. Experiments that might become something useful. Triangulum invents trillient nerps, <laughs> pretty much. Let's see. Uh, Zechterman uh, asks... How does Acre act in the political theater of your mind? Do they have other ambitions besides just trying to make a profit? heresy how dare you how dare you money is the most important thing rude how does acre even even oh, i can't even answer this question i'm so mad <laughs> yeah so that's i mean i hope that answers your question ducats fliff big money uh, okay, Alex, a.k.a. Valheru uh, of House Aquila says, how exactly does hyperspace work? Okay, it's not hyperspace, first of all. Does the ship stay in real space when it goes FTL, or does it disappear from real space travel in warp space and pop back into real space? How is this consistent with general relativity? I don't know fuck all about general relativity, but here's what happens. Time is passing at the same rate all the time for everybody, I guess, except if you're like near a black hole or whatever fucked up thing. You scoop up a bubble of real space with your spike drive. You punch a hole in the universe and you fall into drive space. You follow 
a course through drive space, and then you punch another hole, you get an exit wound, and boop, pop out on the other side near another planet. Um, and that's how it goes. And the amount of time that has passed is the same for you and for your home world and for the place that you arrive in. Because this is science fiction. And I'm not fucking Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm not fucking Neil deGrasse Tyson either. So that's just not, that's not, it's, it's, it's not fun to be too specific and detailed about this shit. It's just dumb. It's dumb to try to be like, uh, actually you go into drive space and it's 10,000 years when you come out later. So the whole universe is dead. So sucks for you. Ha. If you want to play the world's most boring sci-fi RPG with Neil deGrasse Tyson, fucking go tweet at him, all right? This is science fiction. Uh, okay. So Dahlia uh, of uh, House Lyra asks, is Empire Capital basically off limits for factions, or can we say that many factions have members in the Imperial Capital debating and working as the Imperial government? How actively are the factions vying for the throne? That's up to the factions. Um, no one is allowed a base of influence on Imperial Prime because only, only the, the house of the throne, like only the Imperial house is allowed, but everybody can have like assets on the Imperial capital. Of course they can. You gotta have your lawyers and your party machine and like doing all that stuff. It's great. It's, it's, that's how you, that's how you win. You politic the empire. It's the biggest planet in the world. It's ancient and great and fucking cool. So like. Yeah, you can have embassies and representatives, but no base of influence. Like, in the faction turn, a B-O-I, not allowed. Everything else? Yeah, I mean, fucking go for it. I don't care. It's the it's Imperial Prime. That's where you live. I mean, I, I like hard sci-fi too, but I just don't have any interest in, like, getting into those arguments. <laughs> it's the biggest planet in the world, that's what I'm saying. Um, so, yeah, you cannot put a base of influence on Imperial Prime that is high treason. Because that's saying, we lay claim, right? It's the first step. You are not allowed. Um, what happens if you spike drive in atmosphere? Uh, the gravitational well of the planet fucks you up. You can't do it. Spike drives can't be activated in system. You have to be outside of the system to be able to spike drive. So in an atmosphere, I don't know, you probably just blow up. And maybe you take the planet or part of the planet with you. Maybe you light the atmosphere on fire. It's not to be done. Don't, don't do it. Um, yeah, you're not allowed. It will kill you and everyone you love. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's just, it's bad. It's just very bad. Don't do it. Uh, executive minor Damien Felix uh, asks, who are the house nobles ransoming and how would it relate to, I don't, I don't know or care. Ransom whoever you want. At this point, you kind of got to get permission if you want to ransom a player, right? Someone's player. Um, but if you just want to make up a noble and be like, hey, House Vagrant kidnapped your uncle's cousin's brother, Serpens, whoever, I don't care. Go for it. Do it. That sounds fun. Um, all right. We talked about the formation of the empire. Rakshasa Dasra of House Reticulum. We've had discussions between House Crux about dueling customs. We're wondering if we could get a bit more info on the history of the practice. Um... Uh, we invented it so that the nobles would have a way to commit violence against each other to solve problems instead of them going to war. That's a thing. Um, as Crux and Reticulum built it together. Oh, there's, okay, so there's upgrades to be able to spike drill in the atmosphere. All right, we'll fucking talk to House Fornax about that. Uh, what about the other houses and factions? Okay, so there's lots of different disciplines of duel and you can make those up i don't care but my the only things i want to say is duels are either to blood or death uh they can be as personal as knife fights and they can be as impersonal as fleet battles i don't give a fuck if you're really ostentatious you take your 20 best ships and you see who comes out on top uh they can be to blood or death uh and whoever wins the duel according to the protocols of the duel they were right about whatever argument was done. So if I say, hey, Dave, you're a crappy jerk who doesn't know how to play Dungeons and Dragons. And Dave is like, you take that back. And I'm like, nay, sir. Fuck thee. Dave can be like, fine, to the death. And then we choose how we're going to fight. And if Dave kills me, 
or wounds me. It doesn't matter Dave's actual skill in reality. He beat me in a fight, so it doesn't it's, it doesn't matter. He's right. Dave is good at D&D, whether he's actually good or not, right? So apply this to all kinds of realities. Nobles have this way of ignoring the reality in favor of what they've all agreed to. So if it's like, say you catch me having sex with your husband, and you're like, how dare you have sex with my husband? And I'm like, fuck you. I didn't have sex with your husband. And you're like, I will duel you. And we duel, and I stab you. We all just agree, I never had sex with your husband. We all just agree together. Because it would be incredibly gauche after I win the duel for you to be like, you still did it. Everyone would just look at you like, ew, oh, no, no, no. We, we agreed. You won the duel. Back the fuck off. Um, so this is like a social thing. Um, very gauche to like try to go back on a duel. This is why duels to the death are more popular because... No problem. Yeah. However, you could also hire the Deathless to like blow up all my factories. You could hire a reticulum assassin to murder me. Plausible deniability is great. Plus, whatever, your husband's not that hot. So that's that's kind of where I'm at on dueling. Uh, it's a pressure valve for nobles so that we don't get wars. Girl. Enigmatic Cake Lord, which is a great serpent's name. I like it. Um, who has the responsibilities of the perimeter in the sector? Uh, Crux. Yeah. They're the law keepers. Crux. We talked about how the perimeter agency and the exchange and um, the Terran mandate are all kind of wiped out in this game. I don't want them. So instead, Crux is predominantly responsible for what the perimeter agency would be looking for before. Uh, finding people who make and use Maltech, uh, hunting down, uh, that kind of shit, and and dealing with it. Yeah. Um, okay. So those are good. We got those ones. Um, Owlington has asked, what kind... What kind of aliens are there? Can we have some concrete examples? Pixis and the Church HR are cool with aliens, but it'd be good to have some knowledge about actual names, places, and all that. I haven't thought about it yet. I'll do an alien stream at some point. Um, but right now, I will tell you this. Super weird. Super inhuman. More like the Presger than the Klingons. Uh, just not... Not not human. Um, but still, we're humans. So we, you know... We want to have sex with them. We want to eat them. We want to eat and have sex with them. I don't know. We're weird. Humans are gross and weird. But they don't have bumpy foreheads. There are no... Captain Kirk in this context would be weird. You'd be like, Kirk, why are you having sex with that semi-gelatinous energy cloud? And he'd be like, have you ever stuck your dick in a semi-gelatinous energy cloud? It's hot. And the, the alien would be like, I'm operating on a totally different universe than you. So what what is happening? But yeah, like I said, Pixis and the church, they, they have made efforts to be to be friends yes kirk is a pixis for sure he's a pixis but with the like self-assuredness of a crux oh that's pretty fun actually looking at like famous sci-fi characters and sorting them into the houses i like that there you go there's a fun thing to do um all right so uh what caused the aliens this is from student taru ashamed for real, the Church of Humanity repented. What caused the aliens to lose the war against humanity? Um, we sucker punched them. We're villains. We are voracious. We killed, abused, and maligned them into the corners of the universe. We are very good at this. Uh, they are not. Somebody made a, a really good joke earlier. They were like, are, is there a species of aliens that we've like cast out of the sector and maybe they went to a different sector because we shunned them? Are there some kind of shunned aliens? Shunned aliens in another, another sector maybe? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it was good. It was a good one. I wish I could credit that. It's pretty funny. Uh, okay. So uh, Second Seeker Gustav Vang uh, has asked, can we get some de de details on the aliens? How many? What type? Look like? Everything really? I, come on, I know you want me to be like, they're hot, but I just probably will get to it. Uh, all right. So Disco Dan of House Lyra. Disco Dan of House Lyra asks, has there ever been a Lyran emperor? 
Yeah. I think like let's here, let's let's pop back real quick. Let me pop back over to the timeline. Um so like I think I think the the best chance for there to be a Lyran emperor would have been after the Second Civil War, right? Like I feel like the emperor of 2962 was probably the like the emperor of mourning. Like yo, shit has been bad. Let us reflect on that. And by the time we got around to 3062, we're like, all right, we're done. We're done with Goth Emperor. We're done being sad. Flagellation is not popular anymore. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna canonize that. Let's do it. So the new this emperor was a Lyra. And then we need like a more fun, less shitty emperor, a, a more solid emperor in, in 3062. So um 2962 was 2962 was the Lyran uh, emperor. So let's see. The Emperor of the Age of Mourning. The Masked One, etc. I saw maybe my favorite fan art for House Emperor, uh, or House Emperor, <laughs> for House Lyra today. It was this beautiful piece of art. I posted it on Twitter. Go check it out. Beautiful piece of art of, of like a masked courtier. I fell in love. It was so inspiring. Like I saw it and I immediately was just in love. So thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, it was great. It was super great. Um, so the next emperor is like someone great, like a new, a new emperor that we were all like, yeah, time to, time to build something good. So we'll, we'll figure out who that is. Um, yeah, no, Pixis has never had an emperor. Never. I think Vela, I think Vela for that emperor. What, what age is that? Yeah, because that's when that's when Pix is split off too, right? So let's let's call that Vela. That was a Vela Emperor. Um, so that makes sense. Um, and then probably we'll we'll work these out, but they're less important because they're so far away, right? But like Crux at least twice in here. Old two times Crux. Uh, all right. So let's go back to let's go back to the questions. Questions, questions, because we got more. Uh, okay, all right. So uh, that was Disco Dan. Yes, there's been a Lyran Emperor, and it was an age of sadness, and we were all bummed. Uh, Lucas Zahner of the Church of Humanity Repented. What is the dominant imperial language for politics and high culture? I think... It's probably English. I think the church comes from... I think the church comes from, like, Latin roots, but if I'm being real, I think by the time we get into space, if I had to guess... I think most people speak, what, Mandarin? Cantonese? Mandarin and Cantonese to be like, to be honest, like by the time it's not, it's not going to fucking be America that gets us into space. God knows the European and Canadian space programs are going to do fuck all. So we probably all speak English like Imperium is yeah. Sino Sino English Korean, right? Like we probably speak a mix of those things with like Hindi built in like it's there's a new language we speak imperial and it's built on those those language uh and then the church also speaks like the church language is is latin for sure um, but individual planets have their own dominant or subdominant languages um but remember all the cultures are multicultural so there isn't like welcome to this planet everyone here speaks english it's like welcome to this planet 70 percent of us speak english other people speak singaporean chinese uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. But I also think it's a pigeon, right? Like, we have this weird, yeah, this weird pigeon and uh, the imperial language. We speak imperial. And it's based on uh, English and a bunch of other stuff. I think that um, science, like House Triangulum, probably you, in addition to imperial, you probably speak some combination of, like, Arabic and um, Cantonese. Um if you are uncertain, be more multicultural, not less. Do not make monocultures because they're fucking boring. 
Uh, yeah, it depends on whether Spanish would become America's prime language before or after we leave Earth. <laughs> right? So that's, I mean, that's the thing. Languages change a lot in 100 years. Yeah, fuck. Like, someone who speaks Imperial, even if it's based loosely on English, we'd never be able to understand them if they came back in time or we went forward uh, in time. Uh, aliens all have their own languages or what they would consider a language. Et cetera, et cetera. So that's the thing. Yeah. Don't be boring and think about primary languages. Think about like, how can we make this interesting? What is the way we can we can show thousands of years of uh, of human uh, stuff? Uh, so Balfazan of Reticulum asks a really good question. Um, I'm assuming the houses are all intermarried and their bloodlines are mixed. Yes. Yeah. There's lots of that. Assuming that's what happened. What? <laughs> What happened to the Cygnus spouses or partners of members of the other houses? Woof. Uh, but, but I'm a crux. But I'm a crux. No, don't drag me out and shoot me. My, my, my husband is, is a, I've been a crux since I was, tw they're probably, a lot of them got dragged away from their family and killed unless they were important enough that someone was like, no, crux, you stay away from, Fornax, Radicchio, Enrique. I don't care if he was born a Cygnus. He belongs to our house now. So it depends on how influential you were. Lots of people got aced. Yeah, there were purges. They were ongoing. Uh, let's see. Ivan, Az Ivan Azarov, VP of Contracts for the Deathless, asks, how rare are Cymex? And particularly, heavy Cymex. I mean rare but they're not that rare <laughs> I mean yeah, you want psychic max I don't give a fuck that sounds awesome <laughs> it's a serpens x triangulum x reticulum joint oh yeah there's some like some teams of serpens and and reticulum folks who like they're all about that side blade shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Void touched Pixis Ponente Rangi asks, "What great feat did Pixis do to be recognized in their own house? They threw the greatest temper tantrum the sector has ever seen, screaming, 'You're not my real dad!' and slamming the space door as hard as they could." We're going to have our own house with hookers and blackjack, and they're both going to be aliens. And I love them so much. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we talked about dueling a little bit. We talked about how many Embro there were. Uh, good guess of Voigt Crux Helberg Heinrich. Uh, yeah, good good guess on the number. You, you guessed it within like one or two. Um, okay, long question. Long question. Uh, it's more more like... UPC RP event stuff. All right, let's talk about this because obviously this is a thing. Uh, Ducks Legate Aquila Oryx Basque of the Onyx Eagle 29th Legion. It's a mouthful. Of House Aquila asks, <clears throat> At the moment of writing this correspondence, two members of the Noble House Aquila are under threat of annihilation. An explosive has supposedly been placed by the lowly and fractured UPC during an RP prayer event. God damn UPC. Held by the High Church of Messiah's Emperor. Ah, explosives? During a prayer event? Ha! Oh, that's low. If the UPC are indeed foolish enough to martyr these nobles, it could give the houses cause to align in wiping them from the map. You've mentioned you may allow your grand experiment to inform the sector you built outside the faction term, but is there potential that events like these make an appearance in the game itself? Just as news blip in the peripheral of the player's adventure. My hope is that you read this in honor of, not in memoriam for, Legate Aquila VT Anistal and Decanus Aquila Magius Avitus. Ave, brave soldiers. May wind forever be under the wing of Aquila. Ferocite. I, I need to learn how to pronounce this. Ferociter. Fideler. My Latin is shit. I'm going to practice this one. High salutes to you, Hus Aquila. So, here's the thing. Um... RP events, I love them. I love them, and I want them to happen, and they're cool and great. Please do them. I will pay very close attention to them. In this case, do not be surprised if I ask, 
if I ask the UPC, hey, is it okay if I make this canon in the world in a way that like might expose you? Informed consent between the two factions, right? Because I don't want players trying to use RP to be like, cool, well, we, we played this RP event where the 14 red dogs blew up my house. Uh, can we can we fight them? Can that unstealth them? If they're like, yeah, I don't know. Fuck it. That sounds fun. <laughs> but like, you know, uh, consent is important to me and I don't want to ruin anybody's fun. We're all here to play a game that is mostly like a fun narrative. But I bet you if you make up an interesting story, they're going to be hype. Uh, so yeah. Go through your representatives. If you have a cool RP event, let me know because I want to watch. I want to check it out. Isn't there like some kind of giant noble like jerk off ball happening soon? I see people posting like costumes. Is there like a dance or like some shit? I'm so excited. You are such beautiful nerds. Is this going to be like a live event? Are you going to like get together and like RP in voice or something? It's a New Year's Eve party. Guy, I love you. I love you so much. My nerds, you are my people. I'm so excited for you. This is great. This is so great. You've got a whole separate Discord for it. Beautiful. All right. I'm going to try to check that out. I'm going to try to check it out. It sounds, it sounds great. All right. Cool. Uh, so let's continue asking questions. Uh, John Twardowski of House Triangulum asks, what technology does House Triangulum have access to? Considering their tech level five, the rulebook provides some suggestions. But the things, life extension, nanites, time-space manipulation, appear to be the sole domain of other factions. If you have access to a TL1 planet, fucking go to town. Go to town, right? If you have a TL5 planet and the ability to create TL5 faction assets, narratively, do whatever you want. I don't care. Make any TL5 shit you want. Uh, Triangulum, they are just like, they're just, they're making things. Trillient Ring is selling them. The guild is like, TL nine billion. They don't. They don't. They're. They have ascended beyond the tech level thing. Don't even worry about them. But TL TL five planets uh, have access to TL five technology. What you do with it, it's up to you. Yeah, they have like twenty thousand dexterity. You'll never catch them. But they might if they really like you. They might share some of that tech with you. All right. Nova X of the UPC asks, "What's up?" What's the deal with the Psychic Academy chilling out in Sector 0008, Planet Mona? Do you think it's outside the oversight exerted by House Serpents? Yeah, probably. Let's take. Let me take a look at the sector. The sectors without numero here. And let's take a look. Sector, come with me, friends. Come with me, and you'll see. Uh, sector 0008. Uh, what are we talking about here? Where? How do I read a map? What's the fucking? What's going on? Pavis, Mona. Psionics Academy. Yeah, why not? Like, I, I don't know. This is either... I gotta figure it out. But it's either it's either like a big cluster of serpents. I'll talk to House Serpents. If they're okay with this being like a weird independent Psionics Academy, cool, let's do it. I don't care. Nobody else owns this sector. Uh, weird alternate research. It's like a, a fucking... What are the names of those like hippie schools? Where they don't give you the, they don't give you like grades, but they like, they give you, they, they're like, a smiley face. What the fuck is the name of that kind of school? Montessori school. Thank you. Thank you, Ulf. It's a Montessori school, but for psychics. So listen, it's an alternate style of educating. Uh, okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, Hearts asks, there's a couple of questions from Hearts. So doesn't Trillia 9 deserve the Cyborgs tag? No, that the Cyborgs tag means that a, a huge amount of people there are Cyborgs. Most people on Trillia do not, cannot afford, do not. Most of them are factory workers, right? We're talking about like, like Shenzhen or something here, right? Where it's mostly the people that make the cool shit. They themselves are not Cyborgs. Um, so that's a thing. Um, does cybernetic technology work with synthetic bodies? Yeah, sure. Some of it. Uh, and then also what impact does a person have cybernetics have on MES psionic powers used against them? None. This is not Shadowrun. There's no essence. There you go. Lightning round for hearts. Uh, Breenview. So Breenview, I don't know if you're in chat, but let me take this as an opportunity again to thank you for all your hard work on Swan Song. Thank you for that, Breenview. You're great. 
uh, Breenview helped me figure out some really tricky stuff when I was doing uh, building the factions for, for Swansong. So I remember and thank you. So Breenview, who's now of House Lyra, uh, how viable is it for the noble houses to form an oligarchic government among themselves, like a council of nobles, instead of electing an emperor? Would that be legal? Is it a precedent? Would the church try to take over? Damn, I don't know. That's a great idea. That sounds to me like maybe the only way that we get out of this horrible fucked up mess we're in, that we try something better, that we say, you know, I know that it's treason. We have all these secret meetings about maybe, like maybe we don't need an emperor. Maybe we can rule together. We're a family. Maybe this can work. And if you don't get like hanged for it or shot or dragged out into the darkness, uh, that might work because, you know, it needs to happen. The church is against it, but the church has been known to back the thing that is powerful, right? So you could maybe convince the church. Um, it's possible. It's incredibly, incredibly difficult. Uh, I think that it is, God, I, I hope so. I, I believe, I believe in you. I think it's, I think it's certainly possible. Uh, let's see. I have a question here. I'm going to, I'm going to jump into chat and answer a question. I have a question. How did Wilbur Higgins III rise to power and become emperor? Well, uh, you see, he succeeded his predecessor, uh, Emperor Cygnus Randy, uh, by shooting him in the back of the head, um, which as we all know is the only way to really kill a person. Uh, so, so that's how, you know, and then Emperor Higgins, uh, ascended to the throne uh where he promptly died of liver failure uh but emperor higgins the fourth uh you know he was a real good he was a good emperor for for the for the sector yeah uh okay so i hope bring you i hope that i hope that answers your question i think yes it's certainly possible uh we can we can make changes right we can change the system but it's it's very hard it's super entrenched and also everybody like is really suffering right now uh, yeah, no, the church, the, the, the high church obviously worships Brumpo Tungus. Brumpo Tungus was not the emperor. Brumpo is God. That's how we know. He's the son of God and God because Brumpo Tungus almost died and he spent six minutes in, in the presence of, of God, right? So, all right. Uh, NATO filter, uh, of house serpents, uh, says since the premise, uh, of the many houses were colony ship, uh, how did house serpents end up with the responsibility of psychic training and treatment? Did each colony ship start with a responsibility or was it required, acquired later? Yes, yes, 100%. Uh, we talked about this. House Serpens was the medical ship. It was a, a series of medical frigates, the medical fleet, that was responsible for, and I think maybe part of Fornax and Serpens used to be one house. Like House, uh, the name of the stick with the two snakes that I can never remember. Um, house Caduceus. I think House Caduceus probably existed and then split into how serpents and fornax and fornax came from elsewhere because uh i think that like child rearing uh the the crash system like all of all of the ways that we made like made new people uh came from this medical f fleet uh and as we all know house fornax is responsible for baby making uh, in the, in the world for, for, you know, the official fornicatus, uh, it's, it's just like fallen under there. They have like a splinter part of their house that's responsible for that, for making babies and like keeping track of the Imperial census, which technically like they, they have to work with, it's the weirdest part of house fornax. It's like two or three families who are like, why do we still do this? Everyone else makes spaceships and we're about reproductive health. Planned Parenthood is a Fornax organization. Uh, no, so Lyra, House Lyra has their own personal breeding program. They breed like super people uh, by making the best of their house have sex with the other best of their house. They don't breed the empire at whole. They're, they're the Bene Gesserit, right? So they will suggest matches for nobles. Um, I'm talking about the lumpen proletariat, right? They, they House Fornax is like, cool, you have... 15 billion proletarians of of birthing age that means you should have this many babies house lyra is like all right we have your genetic profile 
you're super hot. You're super smart. You're super successful. You got some, some potential psychic power in you. This is your perfect match. This person is super psychic, pretty hot. And if we put you together, you might get a super hot psychic. Let's try it. Right. But they also do it to themselves. They make, they make stuff. Um, and they make themselves better and more beautiful. It's generally accepted that House Lyra is the hottest. They're everybody's like creepy goth girlfriend. So let's see. We got time for a couple more. Uh, just Mitchell S. from House Reticulum. Okay, this is a question that's come up a bunch of times. Um, so... Does House Reticulum only craft great weapons worthy of the finest of the Emperor? Do we craft weapons suitable for outfitting the bulk of Aquila's legions? House Reticulum would never stoop to mass producing a weapon. Every House Reticulum weapon is a beautiful artifact of killing. Aquila gets their guns and their, and their bombs and their bullets from the bullet factories of Acre, right? Acre makes munitions. So Acre mass produces weapons. Yeah. Um, but if you want to make, if you want to make like the best mech possible for a heroic general, you get a one-off, a bespoke mech built by a bunch of different houses working together. Yeah. Um, you want fucking Mjolnir, you go to House Reticulum. Yeah. Bespoke, Baroque, the best goddamn weapons in the universe come from, from them. But they do not they do not feed. Now, I will tell you, Acre knocks that shit off, right? You go to the Acre night market, and you can find pretty good knockoffs of reticulum weapons. Like, there is only one Excalibur, but if you want an Excalibur, you could get it from Acre. You could do that. It's Excalibur-esque. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's less expensive, all right? Yeah, Steven Spielberg, exactly. Uh, okay, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, what is uh, Gary Skellington, spooky, spooky Skellington from House Triangulum asks, what is the sealed menace of House Triangulum? I don't know. Triangulum doesn't know either. We'll figure it out together. And it's going to be messy, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, let's see. Okay, another question about does Reticulum make cool weapons or just a lot of them? Um, okay, here's a really specific question for Belisarius Julian uh, from Aquila. Currently, Aquila's in-house lore states anyone can be awarded a lower noble title by serving 25 years in the Legion, similar to the Roman path of citizenship. We understand that nobility is mostly hereditary, but many of us is brought into this system. So question, can this system have a place in Far Verona? Yeah. Everybody else probably makes fun of you for it. It's embarrassing. They all kind of think that you're dorks and that most Aquila that rose up through the legions are not real nobles. They're like nobles. And you get a lot of disrespect for it and they treat you like jerks. But fuck them. You served in the legions. You know. You've earned your nobility. You're for real. Fuck those jerks. So yeah, go for it. That's canon. That's 100% canon now. Done. Sold. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Dark Vlagger uh, of 14 Red Dogs asks... About Kama, how fucked up are things down there? Is it a dystopian, lawless, alien engineered? Oh, this is the sex planet. This is the like weird. Okay, so imagine, God, you to understand my my context here for weird guild sex planet. Um, you have to understand like Annihilation, the 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 book. Um, so like the the Southern Reach. Uh, the Sector X or whatever it's called, Area X. You also, by extension, have to have an understanding of Roadside Picnic, right? Um, and then imagine both of those books were set in Las Vegas, ramped all the way up. What's the name of that that Pleasure Planet in, in Saga, 
right? Like, it's it's like so a bunch of aliens use this planet for all of their like weird sex fantasies back before they they when they they were going through a a dirty phase, uh, and then they left and they just left their like discarded prophylactics and sex toys and rotating etc laying around on the planet and left and then a bunch of humans showed up and we're like yo what's all this cool shit and they don't understand how it works and people are definitely like putting stuff in them that turns them inside out it's dangerous and unsanitary and horrifying but it might also be like the time of your life you never know Listen, when you've done everything and you've had sex with everyone and there's nothing left to do when you're a debauched noble, this is where you go. You go to Planet Hellraiser and you stick your dick in a weird guild artifact and you see what happens. And maybe it'll kill you and maybe it won't. Uh, cool. Okay. Um, so it's been, it's been two hours and I'm honestly like I'm just I'm getting a little like run down and I don't want to start giving goofy punch drunk answers so i think we're gonna i think we're gonna call the stream there i think that'll be all the lore that we'll cover but i gotta tell you i got 121 questions in so we could just do this shit again i guess i'll schedule another lore stream <laughs> so yeah keep an eye on the events page check it out down below you'll find another one we got halfway through <laughs> So I'll just, I don't know, maybe we'll make this like a, a weekly, maybe I'll find a slot for it. We'll make like a weekly sit down and lore Q&A question. I got to say, before I go, uh, eternal gratitude, eternal gratitude to the hardworking folks who are putting together the Far Verona Wiki. Uh, the Far Verona Wiki is the place that I look when I go to make my like lore decisions about stuff to see what's going on. And they're also performing f fucking the glorious labor of taking down the the bullshit that I say, making sense of it, and sorting it so that you can see it later. Like, I just spew lore, and they make it make sense. They find where it fits. So, Math Squad Space to you, wiki managers. You are the best. Uh, and thanks to all of you. If you want to get involved in all this, if you tuned in or you're watching this on YouTube and you're like, what in the actual shit is Adam talking about? This is a lore building stream for roleplay Far Verona, uh, which I, I hope you will tune in to watch on May 9th. It's on my schedule. It's going to be over at twitch.tv slash itmejp. I am more excited about this game than I think I have ever been about any campaign I have ever run in the 25 years of me running games. 